Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a show dedicated to helping you escape diet culture, gain trust with food, honor your body, and live a brighter life. Hello, hello, and welcome back to The Kitchen Table. I'm your host, Alicia Brown, and on today's episode, I have a robust Q&A lined up for you today. Really excited for this question answer episode. Thank you to all those who submitted questions on my question box on Instagram. You can expect Q&A episodes at the top of every month. That is the first Monday of every month here on the show. Um, And so look for that question box at the top of every month as well. And if you have a question that you want to submit earlier, maybe there's something coming to mind in the moment, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm at aliciabrown.rdn, aliciabrown.rdn on Instagram. You can send me a message there and I will cover it in the next coming month's Q&A episode. But without further ado, I'm going to get right into the first question because I have so many great questions that I want to roll through. And I know that these questions are questions that you either have had or currently have about intuitive eating. You know what? We talk a lot about like moving from the weight loss paradigm to the intuitive eating paradigm, right? And I talk about that like it's easy, but it's it's not. We actually have a lot of values that are attached to that weight loss paradigm. Maybe you've grown up with weight loss as a goal, you know, like for yourself, or maybe it was like one of your parents or like an influence in your life that has told you that like weight loss is something that's valued. We place a value around weight loss. Our society places value around weight loss. The food rules that we have ingrained within the weight loss paradigm are treated like religion for so many of us, right? Like they're so deeply ingrained that it is really hard to pull apart from that weight loss paradigm to really see what the benefits of eating intuitive eating, uh, eating intuitively could be. And so uh, these questions, what they all surmount to is like really talking about why we should really pull from those weight loss ideals, pull from the dieting, the detoxes, the supplements, the, the food rules that we have that circulate in our mind that tell us what, when, and how much to eat that sourcing validation for our health externally. Pulling from all of that is really hard. And that causes a lot of trepidation when we talk about jumping into intuitive eating, because it is true that intuitive eating opposes a lot of the weight loss paradigm. The intuitive eating paradigm almost completely opposes the weight loss paradigm. And that is why it's called truly the anti-diet approach. And so that's why your questions are so valuable because they actually unpack the nitty gritties of what it takes to pull away from the weight loss paradigm to really see what intuitive eating has to offer. Okay. So let's get into the first question. Alicia, why do I not have the drive to diet? Why don't I have the drive to diet? Well, my first um, thought on this question is that you're not really getting a good return on your investment you might not feel like you're getting a good return on your investment. Now, this investment might be financially. It might be an investment of your time, your effort, your energy, everything that you're putting into dieting, you might not feel like you're getting a great return on that investment of. Well, this would make complete sense because 95% of us that hop on a diet don't feel like we get a good return on that investment either. The investment of our time, our effort, our energy, our mental space, right? we might not even see that weight loss sustained. And that is, again, 95% of us cannot sustain a diet for more than five years. So the effort and the energy, the money that we put into dieting, we're not getting, we're not getting it out of it. We're not getting enough out of our efforts of dieting. We're left exhausted. And it might, that exhaustion might be your body's feedback it might be the body letting you know that it has a response to even perceiving dieting. Like the thought of dieting might instantly lead to feeling like tension or exhaustion in the body. And if that's you, that might be there for a reason that exhaustion might be worth exploring. Why do I feel too exhausted to diet again? That might be a great question to ask. Why do I feel tense or anxious when thinking about dieting? Why do I fear, 
why do I fear food, but also not want to hop on a diet again? I'm too exhausted to hop on a diet again, but I'm still maybe feeling fearful of food. Maybe you're kind of between those two things. It's like, oh, I don't know how else to take care of myself other than dieting with food. But at the same time, I feel too exhausted to start on another diet. If that's you, intuitive eating was created for that point of exhaustion where you feel like I can't hop on another diet. What do I do? Here's intuitive eating. Here is a way to think completely differently about your food experience. Here's a way to, instead of looking somewhere else to tell you what, when, and how much to eat, you can look within yourself by healing your relationship with food to answer those questions in a flexible way that meets your body's needs. It's not a weight loss program, but it is a program that can reconnect you to yourself and achieve better health, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. And so lean into that exhaustion, lean into the question that you have of like, why do I not want to diet? How does your body feel when you think about dieting? What comes to mind first? Why aren't you getting a good return on that investment? And what might you need instead? Those are questions that I would ask yourself. The body might seriously be unwilling to restrict itself anymore. It might even be telling you even beyond exhaustion, like, no, we're not doing that. We don't have the energy to do that again. We don't have the willpower to do that again. And if that's you, intuitive eating exists for you in that state. A lot of people stay within the weight loss paradigm because it is It's that constant pursuit, that constant chase that keeps them going. It's like that carrot of weight loss is dangling and we're just keeping running, trying to catch it. It's exhausting. But that point of exhaustion is maybe where there's a turning point. That point of exhaustion is maybe like the body saying no more. There needs to be another way. And therein is why I'm so glad that you're here at the kitchen table because there is another way through embodiment practices and intuitive eating to strengthen our mind-body connection, to build trust with ourself, and to honor and respect the body with food by how we eat. Eating mindfully, eating intuitively, it sets us free from the weight loss paradigm. And you won't have the drive to diet again after eating intuitively because You'll find such trust within yourself that you won't need to rely on another set of rules to guide how to, to guide how you eat again. Thank you so much for that question. I think that that can be a great turning point for you if you decide to kind of dig deeper into your own question. Journal about this. Why don't you have the drive to diet? Why don't you want to hop on a diet again? How does your body respond to even thinking about dieting again? Journal on those questions for a minute again because you might not want to let go You might not want to invest in the way that you did in diets before. Anyway, great question. Thank you. And let me know where that lands with you. Um, Yeah, thank you. Um, Next question, intermittent fasting. Ooh, okay. I just did an episode on um, Gwyneth Paltrow's intuitive fasting. Um, I just saw my friend Claire Tuning, another anti-diet dietitian. She was saying in her stories that when she types in intuitive on her phone, it automatically comes up with fasting as the next word. Do you know how sometimes like, you know, I don't know if you have Apple or Android phone, whatever, you know, you type it in and it predicts the next word that comes after. If you type it intuitive, she said that fasting comes after. I did not try this, but does this happen for you when you type in intuitive on your phone? Because I think that's crazy. Gwyneth Paltrow's in our phones talking about intuitive fasting. If you're curious on my thoughts on her book, flip back a couple of weeks in episodes. I did a whole episode on how I thought about her truly hijacking the term intuitive and turning it into a diet. I'm not a fan of it. Okay. I'm not a fan of it, but I explain why in that episode, but we're not talking about intuitive fasting. We're talking about intermittent fasting right now. The question is, does it contribute to disordered eating? What are its long-term benefits and drawbacks? Okay. Yes, I feel like intuitive. <laughs> yeah, now I say intuitive. Yes, I feel like intermittent fasting is a diet. One thing though that's unique about intermittent fasting, it, is it, it doesn't tell you what to eat. It only tells you when to eat. But when a diet tells you when to eat, There is a rigidity there that causes black and white thinking. 
it causes good or bad beliefs. So with intermittent fasting, with intermittent fasting, there are only like eating windows that you can eat within. So say that like your eating window was like from noon to seven. If you were hungry, any time out of that eating window, it would be seen to be not abiding by the intermittent fasting protocol. Now, that's what's really challenging is because you might get body cues that tell you, yes, now it's time to eat. And it might be nine o'clock at night. Say that you just went like bowling with your friends. You had dinner before bowling, then you went bowling with your friends. And then all of a sudden you're hungry again, but because you're intermittent fasting, now you can't have a snack before bed. That can lead to disordered eating because your body is giving you cues that you are not able to honor through this framework, through the intermittent fasting framework. It's not flexible enough. It's too rigid. And it also, it also can foster the restrict and binge cycle because when we don't honor that hunger, when it shows up, we restrict ourselves. We say, no, not right now, not time to eat right now. And so then when it's finally time to eat, we can be more prone to a binge. We can be more vulnerable to binging because our body is so hungry. Of course, it's just going to eat everything and everything when it's at a, such an extreme level of hunger. That's the body's just innate primal response to getting its needs met with food. And so, of course, we're more prone to binging if we're restricting in the non-eating times. So that's how it kind of promotes this like restrict binge cycle with food. That's not healthy. And it really, yeah, fosters a kind of disordered eating mentality for a lot of people. And lastly, um, oh, another note that I had on this is that it's not flexible enough. Like say that you like went on a trip somewhere and I know I'm talking about like bowling and trips, like COVID doesn't exist, but just pretend with me. Okay. Like say that you had to, you know, take a flight somewhere and your flight schedule is off or you weren't able to get food during the eating window, but, um, but you were hungry. And so you needed to eat without the, you know, outside of the eating window. Would you allow yourself? Would you be bad for eating when your body was hungry? If the answer to that is yes, then we are in disordered eating. This is a disordered eating framework. Sometimes, like practically, it's just not possible to abide by these rules and honor your hunger at the same time. And so because of that, it is a diet and it can foster disordered eating and it can foster binging because sometimes when we're out of that window and we are just hungry, we might just say like, you know, screw it. I'm going to eat all of it. I'm going to eat all of it because I am not following the rules. And so what do the rules matter anyway? I'm also not going to tune to my body with hunger or fullness now. And so again, more vulnerable to rebelling, more vulnerable to binging because it's not flexible enough to meet our needs. Too rigid, fosters right and wrong mentality. And two more things. You know, the truth is that there's not enough research to substantiate long-term benefits of intermittent fasting, not in regards to blood sugar, not in regards to total health, especially as Gwyneth Paltrow would disagree with me on this, but especially not in, you know, healing your relationship with food or becoming more intuitive at some point, like that's baloney, that's bogus. Um, And so there's not enough research, not enough evidence backed by human studies. Now there's mostly like totally only animal studies that are talking about blood sugar, that are talking about like, um, I guess, you know, mostly, I guess mostly blood sugar. There was another study though that I saw on rats. What was it? Oh, weight, about weight, normal, uh, um, weight loss. No, not enough research. Not enough research. Any research that's done that's partially substantiated is done with rats. And to me, that's not good enough research, okay? There's not enough research to substantiate hopping on intermittent fasting. And we know like when we have this mindset about like how it skews our relationship with food, it's clear to see that it's totally not serving because when we really care about having a healed relationship with food, we believe that the relationship can be flexible to meet our body's needs when they show up, whenever they show up. That's why intuitive eating believes that you can determine yourself what, when, and how much to eat And as far as like a routine goes, like I see that like uh, intermittent fasting like believes in a routine with eating and I like routine. Trust yourself 
that when you eat intuitively, your body will find its own routine. Your body will begin to understand when it will get fed. You'll understand your body cues more. You'll be able to predict your, predict your hunger better and be able to honor that hunger better. And therefore, honor your fullness better as well because you've established that body trust. Your body knows it'll get fed. You feed the body. It moves on. It doesn't feel like it has to eat in excess because it's worried about being deprived. There's a balance there. And that is the beautiful balance. Your body will discover its own routine. You don't need the routine established by intermittent fasting. I hope that answers your question. Not enough on long-term benefits, too many drawbacks, impacts our relationship with food, and I think contributes to disordered eating, especially in the restrict binge cycle with food. Cool. Cool. Next question. I want to quit dieting and shut out diet culture, but all the doubts pop up. Yeah. I want to dieting and quit diet culture. I want to quit dieting and diet culture, but all the doubts pop up. I hear this. I know it's hard to detach from all the things that we learned from a nutrition standpoint that we've learned maybe from our parents and our upbringing when it comes to weight loss and health. So much of that is ingrained in the dieting mentality. So much of what we've learned since we were young, or especially me, like in my teenage years, maybe the same for you too. So much of that is is within the weight loss paradigm. It's really difficult to detach from all of those beliefs. Of course, the doubts come up, but what if I gain weight? But what if I'm unhealthy? But what if I, you know, uh, what if I leave myself prone to disease or chronic disease, or maybe my parents have heart disease? What if I, you know, end up like my parents or, you know, what if I have real, what if I have troubles later in life? Because I detach from some of these weight loss ideals that are encapsulated in health. Know that all of those doubts that you have that keep you within that weight loss paradigm are there to keep you safe. They're there for a reason. It's these thoughts are yourself wanting to protect yourself from trying something new, radically, radically different and in opposition to what you've learned. So I, I completely get that, you know? However, dig into those doubts, dig into those buts and what ifs. Because in the conversation about your fear, about your fears of weight change, about your fears of food, about your fears of health, those can all be unpacked. And I argue that they can be achieved in a healthier and more sustainable way through the intuitive eating framework. Yeah, it does oppose most all of the weight loss paradigm, but you might achieve so much more through the intuitive eating framework by detaching from those rules that keep you looking externally for health by looking internally instead and being able to trust yourself. So look into those doubts, sift through those fears. And I hope that this show helps you in a way gain some clarity on that. All of the buts and what ifs and the shoulds, they're there for a reason. And what if we could sift through those to see like what might intuitive eating offer us instead? It might offer us better health, not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally. It might actually have the ability to keep us free from disease. Without yo-yo dieting, we actually have a better baseline with our weight to be able to withstand and have more resilience to things in our environment. Like there is great research to say that like when we're not yo-yo dieting, when we're not putting stress on ourselves due to weight change, that we're more able to tackle other things in life like disease. And so being really stable and secure in our relationship with food completely changes the game when it comes to health. And that's what intuitive eating has to offer you stability with food by trusting in yourself in the process. And so, yes, all of the shoulds are like, oh my gosh, but what if I don't follow this rule anymore? What if I do this? What if I gain weight? Sift through those things and ask more questions here on the show. We'll unpack them and we'll be able to see what intuitive eating might have to offer instead of being in that exhausting cycle. Thank you so much for submitting that question. Next question. Alicia, I'm trying to live free from diets, but I truly have a weight that is uncomfortable. I'm struggling to know how to lose weight without a diet. Well, 
There are so many people in this position. I empathize. I know that weight loss is a desire for so many of us. Even those that feel like they have a healed relationship with food and body, there still might be some residual desire to diet. And that's okay. Again, it's like ingrained in our minds that thinner is better, if thinner is healthier, smaller is better or healthier. And I get that. I empathize with that. I empathize with that desire. However, I don't have like, and trust me, if I knew a sustainable way to lose weight, I might still exist within the weight loss paradigm. I used to, when I first was a dietitian on entering entrepreneurship, I was in the weight loss paradigm. I couldn't find a way for clients to sustainably lose weight and keep their mental sanity. I found the insanity of weight loss too much to bear. And that's why I'm in the intuitive eating framework right now. The reason why I bring that up is because I don't know a way for you to sustainably lose weight. And I definitely don't know a way for you to sustainably lose weight without the expense or toll it takes on your mental health. And I care about your mental health, your physical health, and your emotional health. I care about you as a whole integrated human being. And so I can't recommend weight loss for that reason. But I do understand also that it can feel uncomfortable being in a larger body. It can feel uncomfortable being in the body that you're in. And so I, I want to address that in a non-diet way because I do understand the desire for weight loss and I understand that there's a discomfort here that needs to be addressed. Instead of addressing the discomfort as something that could be resolved by weight loss, what if we address the discomfort in all of its tangible um, means. Like where is that discomfort being derived from? If it's a physical discomfort, we can directly address that. If you're feeling pain, address the pain, like the physical pain in your body, treat that. Maybe you work with a physical therapist, you know, maybe you get a massage. Maybe there is a way to treat the physical pain that you're experiencing. You deserve to live free from that pain without having to lose weight beforehand. We can treat that pain specifically. If you're feeling some of the discomfort is coming from like having a low stamina, you're like going on walks and you're frustrated on how exhausted you feel just by walking, work on the stamina. If you want to improve your strength, if you're feeling weak in your body, there's a way to gain more strength. If you're feeling less mobile, less nimble than you would like to be, work on your mobility. How can we stretch more? Do you want to engage in more different exercise? How would that feel in your body right now? Do you see, instead of like talking about the weight loss and talking about achieving the weight loss specifically, I'm talking about the things underneath the weight loss that you can resolve more immediately. Oftentimes it's like weight loss is like this looming thing. Like when you lose the weight, you'll be more comfortable. And actually, no, like there are, there are a lot of other ways in better ways that we can treat that discomfort by minimizing pain, increasing stamina, increasing strength, increasing mobility. We can do all of that without having a focus on weight loss. And I think everyone would be excited on having better stamina, better strength, more mobility, less pain. Those things we can talk about and treat immediately. And so if your discomfort or this uncomfortable feeling that you have in your body, if it's a physical thing, those are things that you can tangibly work towards right now. And maybe you could get support in helping you do that without having the stress of having to change your body size. How would that feel to you in your life right now? If the discomfort that you're feeling in your body right now is emotional, if it's emotional discomfort that you feel, if it's insecurities that you're feeling about your body, if you're feeling your body is not good enough in any way, that discomfort is coming from diet culture. That discomfort is derived from diet culture. That is, that is our upbringing, our society, our current values that are tied to our weight, telling us that right now our body's not accepted in the, in the, in the size that it is right now. And so that's all derived from diet culture and our upbringing and values associated with weight. And so here, this answer is really twofold as I think about it. You know, like the first is like, is the discomfort physical? Treat that physical discomfort. If the discomfort that you're feeling right now is emotional, then it's coming from diet culture. Um, 
yeah, let me know where that lands with you right now. If we're talking about physical discomfort, there are ways that we can address that physical discomfort probably immediately to reduce your pain, increase your stamina and strength, et cetera. If it's emotional, then we need to talk about diet culture. We need to talk about the values and beliefs right now that we have tied to weight and sift through those things so we can kind of uncover some truth there when it comes to your body and your weight right now. And you might find that actually you're in a body that is functioning for you right now in ways that we're not shining light on, you know? And um, when we kind of get into the nitty gritties of diet culture and our forms and, you know, our attitudes and beliefs about our body, we can really uncover more and more about what our true values are, not what diet culture's values are, but what our true values are and how we want to show up in the world. And that is worth doing. That's exactly what we're doing here at the kitchen table. This is an excellent question. I think we all want to feel more comfortable in our bodies. I think we all want to feel more comfortable in our bodies. We all want to feel more at home in our bodies. So true. And so very hearing and empathizing the discomfort that you feel. And I hope that this message gives you hope that there are things that you can do right now to help relieve some of that discomfort without the looming pressure of having to change your weight. Alrighty. Last question. Alicia, I struggle eating on a schedule and feel a blood sugar crash throughout the day. I feel a blood sugar crash throughout the day. This happens when we don't honor hunger or we can't honor hunger because our schedule is so crazy. I know who submitted this question. I know that she has this crazy schedule. She is a working woman like so many of us here at the kitchen table. And I hear that. And um, when we don't honor hunger, we can sometimes feel fatigued, exhausted, um, and that is kind of like that energy dip is often like a blood sugar dip as well. We need to replenish that blood sugar. I know that the work schedule can get in the way sometimes. I know that like stress and where we're at in our menstrual cycle and other things can prevent us from really leaning into our hunger cues. They might not be super pronounced. We might not be able to really hear them, or maybe our day is so busy that we're not really being attuned to our body. We're kind of being disembodied. We're kind of um, a lot in our heads and not as much in our bodies to really feel those hunger cues sometimes. I completely get that. But that blood sugar crash, that is your body saying, this is enough. You need to feed me now. <laughs> that crash is like that, that point of exhaustion where your body is like, I need food and I need food now. Excuse me while I take a sip of water. <laughs> um, so so even that blood sugar crash is your body saying, I need food. And maybe you realize that you need to like predict this a little bit better in your schedule. You might plan some snacks. You might actually take your lunch break. <laughs> you might prioritize eating a little bit more in your schedule. If at all possible, there's a great return on that investment because you'll have more energy throughout the day. You won't hit blood sugar lows. Um, and a rule of thumb, last thing, a rule of thumb with eating is to not fast or to not abstain from eating for more than five hours at a time. Don't wait more than five hours to eat between meals, okay? When we're going more than five hours without eating, like physically, the body is like needing more blood sugar. The body is not able to sustain that. The body is going to need food. So if you're ever like planning out your day and you're thinking that you just don't need lunch, you'll just power through and you're going more than five hours without eating, expect your performance to decrease. Expect your mental faculties to decrease. <laughs> um, expect your energy to decrease. Uh, you won't be able to work as hard as you did. You're going to be very tired. You're going to be very hungry. And that's a really uncomfortable place to be in. And so don't go more than five hours without eating. Uh, Take that as a rule, if you will, <laughs> but it serves your body in a way because um, you don't want that blood sugar low. Um, and last thing, I keep saying last thing, but seriously, um, attune to your body, you know, take breaks, take breaks, take some deep breaths, ask your body how it's feeling, what it might be needing. Ask yourself, when is the last time you ate? When is the last, the next time that you'll get to eat? And then you might find yourself um, maybe predicting more of when you can eat and eat enough. Yeah, totally. And eat enough. Uh, eat when you're hungry and eat enough. That is like 
a huge part of this intuitive eating game. I hope that this was serving to you. This was such a fun episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you again for these excellent, excellent questions. I hope this served you. If somebody else that you know in your circle is either in the dieting paradigm right now, or they're curious to learn more about in, um, I was going to say intermittent fasting. Oh my gosh. If someone, you know, is in the weight loss paradigm, but they're curious to know like what intuitive eating is, send them this episode. This got a lot of questions answered about intuitive eating. Um, so send them this episode. And while you have your phone out, hit subscribe. So you don't miss an episode every Monday and Thursday here at the kitchen table. Q and A's top of the month. Every other Monday is monologues with me. Every Thursday are interviews with high esteemed guests. I have the greatest guests coming on the show. You don't want to miss an episode. So hit that subscribe button and leave a review. If you have a minute, I would so appreciate that. Anyway, have a great, great rest of your Monday and I look forward to talking soon.